So uh, welcome to our June uh, 2023 board meeting. So we've got the previous minutes uh, posted up and they all look pretty good to me. Did anyone see anything that needed to be fiddled with? Okay. So we've got uh, a few items on here. I'm gonna jump past uh, the success for stream and come back to it because I suspect that that's gonna take longer. Uh, the secure boot stuff for the uh, special interest groups uh, looks like Brian's gonna have something for us maybe July. Uh, yeah, so I'm not sure. Um... Uh, we'll definitely have an update by then. I think some of the, uh, just to give you an idea of what, what's kind of been going on with um, uh, with that, we've had a, a little bit of uh, uh, organizational change in uh, various different places. So the stream team has been uh, working on the, um, the uh, workflow convergence for the rel eight and rel nine stuff for most of the beginning of this year. And so that's taken the infra sig a little bit of uh, of time there. So that's where we've spent some of our time. We've also had uh, a couple of folks from the bootloader team here at Red Hat move on to other things. And so those are the folks that were going to help us with some of the upstream changes that we need. So we're still looking to get an idea and, and I'll have a, like a better update uh, for the board probably sometime uh, at the board meeting next month. But uh, we're meeting with some new folks who might be able to help us uh, sort of continue some of that, uh, that upstream work. So uh, that's why there's not a whole lot of progress yet, but I'll have an update uh, coming up as as soon as I know more. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I was just wondering, do we want to create an infra ticket and close this one at the board? Because I don't think we can bring much value at the board with these tickets, but it's up to you. Huh? But uh, Yeah, let me... Let me find the right tracker to put this in. There's not much for the InfraSig to do until we finish that upstream work uh, in uh, Secure Boot and stuff like that. And we have a couple of uh, of things to do to catch up on some of the existing signatures in the distro. So uh, it may be a Bugzilla, it may be uh, okay. an Infra ticket, but I'll figure out where to put that and then link it to that issue. And then we can close the board issue if if you folks are okay with that. Yeah, if we can yeah. break down the, the work items and put them somewhere so we can get like a bird's eye view of what we're at in the project, what are the blockers, if people can help, what they can do to help. I think that would be useful to also get a sense that like things are moving forward, they aren't just stuck. Yeah, yeah and in uh, I'm definitely with Tomas that since there isn't a lot for us to do, as long as we've got something we can point at and say, here's where it's happening, we don't really need to hold on to this forever. For the for the update in July, we may have some something to discuss at this level around like the um, the the governance and like how all this works between the the individual SIGs. It seems natural that the SIG chairs would be the uh, you know sort of the folks who would coordinate some of that that activity. But um, we we can talk about that uh, in terms of the uh, whenever we have an update, probably next board meeting or so. That's fine. Yeah, I didn't want to put you on the spot. I just it was on the agenda that Brian will have a thing in July. So it's like wanted to check with you to make sure that we didn't sign you up without telling you. <laughs> so uh, we've got an item on here about uh, discourse versus mailman. As I know that we're piggybacked off of some uh, listserv stuff with mailman, that Fedora is moving to discourse and maintaining extra infrastructure when we don't have to have extra infrastructure is not great, but maintaining the infrastructure that we have to have is great. And so which items are uh, which sort of thing? My understanding is that on the Fedora side, there is a willingness to eventually move to this course, but I get the impression the mailing list will be around for quite a while, if not forever, given the current state of things. Maybe I'm wrong, but that's been my impression from the various threats and conversations I've seen. I don't know if there's any, been any official comms on this. Yeah, I'm, I'm a heavy list user and not so much a discourse user, but I'm also a single person in our community. And if the greater bits of our community say, yes, like discourse, I will learn discourse. Um, so it is partially figuring out which workflows really capture our community best and which workflows don't take our happy community and make them sad. And I don't know how to measure that because I barely know how to describe it. I think that's a totally valid point. 
there's a counterbalance to that though, which is hosting a mailing list is not as um, straightforward as it used to be 10 years ago. Namely, Mailman 2 depends on Python 2 and all of that is end of life. And Mailman 3 or HyperKitty has a much larger and more complicated dependency stack involved. Um, so asking, asking Infra to go and stand up a Mailman 3 server and invest time there just because people don't want to try Discourse uh, is something we could do. I don't know that it's the best use of resources for that small team. Like that's something that I would expect Red Hat to have an opinion on, but Bex, yeah. Red Hat has a slight opinion on this. Um, so from an efficiency point of view, I think it opens us up to having greater opportunity to do things we want to do if we combine infrastructure where it makes sense. This is a perfect example of where working, I think, with other sponsored Red Hat projects makes a lot of sense. Um, putting on my I'm asking you to do this thing hat, I would say I think it's completely legit for this board to ask the Fedora Council what the reaction to discourse has been in their community. While their community is different, they have many of the same mechanical workflows that we have here, and they should be able to tell us, yeah, this is what we found out worked, this is what we found out didn't, these were fears that were unfounded, these were fears that were founded. Um, and I think that's a something that Matthew Miller should be able to help us coordinate getting answered by the Fedora Council. Yeah, that's, that's a great, great idea. idea. Yeah. 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 Yeah, as it is definitely important to me that we go where the community wants to be. Yeah. And we need to, like talking to Fedora, there is gonna be a great way for us to get a sense as to at least one large friendly open source community to us, what they felt and how we can make that feel right. Yeah, and even if we do end up keeping lists, it doesn't really make sense to have a list infra dedicated just for CentOS. Like if we did that, it makes sense to either use the Fedora infra or have combined infra somewhere if the Fedora infra isn't sustainable for whatever reason, but like, or at least have that conversation if there's a desire on both parts to keep list around in some form. Yeah. And along those lines, I would volunteer Sean um, to find out from his colleagues in OSPO what other sponsored communities are doing so that we understand if there's a community whom we could club with to to maintain lists if somebody's already doing that um and perhaps sean you can go through justin to actually get the answer for the council because you'd be connected anyway yes we talk often we've talked about this although maybe there's there i guess there's details that i don't know but um i have talked considerably with justin and somewhat with matthew about their discourse um license and the options of us using it. Um, so I, I have some sense of that, but the I'm not sure on the mailing list uh, side. I agree, like if, if we have to have some mailing lists or if we want to, and if Fedora has to continue having them, why, why we would have separate infrastructure is, is beyond me. Um, I'll check with the team. Yeah, my, my only real concern for. is that Discourse has a licensing thing with it and Budgets are weird. Budgets are weird. We have a we have a hosted thing with this course. We pay them and we pay them considerably because our I don't know the details and I don't know if I could say them anyway, but something about like our legal team wanted specific clauses and they're like, oh, well, then you're on our super enterprise point, something like that. I don't know. Um, but my understanding is that our plan would allow us to have for marginally more um, you know, a separate site. If we wanted a CentOS site, it wouldn't be standing up a whole new contract like we already went through with Fedora. It would be like a, a small addendum onto what we have. Not to, to continue the conversation unnecessarily, but I will say, I think it's important for us to consider all options. So as an example, we spot Red Hat sponsors an upstream community for OpenShift called OKD. I have no idea what they use, yeah. but if the decision is that we must have a mailing list, maybe they're running one and we can just combine forces there. Like, let's not just look at Fedora. Yeah, that's fair. I'll, I'll, yeah, definitely. I'll ask the whole OSPO team and see what we have going. 
And then uh, the last item on our call outs was uh, before the uh, Cinto stream thing was, uh, we got a question on the list, I think yesterday or two days ago from Peter George about uh, Koji tags on uh, the community build system that target uh, rel bits. And I will confess, I had thought that we'd said, yeah, sure. But he asked for follow up on that. I thought we'd done this already. We didn't. Yeah, I also yeah, thought that we'd done it. This is all. Uh, yeah, this is all done. I think um, the the question, the the second question that he had was about a specific package that would enable the. Uh, it, it would basically take the the extra repo and enable it on a rel host, and uh, that's. I think we've talked about this a couple of times. We don't necessarily want to like an omnibus package that enables every SIG repo on a rel host yeah. uh, because we want the we want rel and the specific rebuilds to pick which SIGs they want to put in their own extras repo or have their users download the individual release files. So uh, did, did I, it, it, was that too complicated? Did I explain that right? Does that make sense? What we were... that, that triggered my memory on some things. Um, you see, the concern you're saying is we do not want to have a repo with all the release packages in them for us specifically because we believe people should or... pick and choose which ones they want and not just have access to a repo with all of them. Is that fair? Yeah, same for the rebuilds too, because the rebuilds will, like Alma and Rocky will pick whatever whichever SIGs they want to enable in their own extras repo. This doesn't seem unreasonable to me, but I also don't see the harm in also providing an, a repo with all of them, with the caveat that, like, if you enable that, then you get all of them. Like, I mean, yeah, something? it's yeah. So we want those we want those individual sites. So Rocky Alma, and then um, the individual SIGs that want to make stuff available to rel users. We want them to pick and choose. Uh, the like the individual downloads or the th the set of content that they want to include in their own extras repos. We don't want to make that decision necessarily for them. And you don't want to maintain an extras repo that will be separate right. from this, that will just have them all as like right. a, if you don't care, you get them all. I see. Yeah. Yeah, I would definitely be opposed to a single repo file that had 300 different repos in it that were all set to enabled one. Um, if I put that on a machine I manage, I should be stabbed by my coworkers. Um, as you should definitely be picking which repos you turn on. But we're talking about a repo data that has 30 different release files in it and you can yum install a particular uh, release file. That would be great. Um, and so that's kind of where my inklings are at. Yeah, I personally don't see the harm in just having a repo with these in, uh, as long as we make it clear that like, if you enable that, that's what you're getting. But as I like, personally, I consume the uh, KMOD repo for my CentOS stream host and for my rel hosts and for my rel rebuild hosts. And it is very nice. Yeah, okay. and obviously this would only be for six that actually deliver content for uh, because not all of them do. Yeah. Okay. So Brian, can I have you uh get back to Peter George on this? Yeah, I'll see if I can write something okay. again to see if that it helps clarify things. Yeah, because I suspect part of our uh communication is that there's the repo file, the repo data, the repo URL, and we're just saying repo over and over. And uh, while I think I'm following which repos are which repos, I'm also not certain I'm following which repos are which repos. And so sometimes annoying specificity is helpful. And so uh, with that, I think uh, the uh, big thing on our ongoing discussion list is talking about our success criteria for CentOS stream. I'm gonna drop a link in the chat again, just because it's nice to have floating around. And I think we made some really good progress on this uh, last time, and there've been some more updates to help increase the clarity and structure it in ways that I think are really 
beneficial to me remembering which parts are going where. And so um, Amy did such a good job leading that last time that I feel a bit uh, lost because I don't know what to do other than just repeat what she did. And so we've really got uh, broken out into some major categories of core SIG participation or core and SIG participation, a community and operator users. And thinking about these as segments that are related parts of our community uh, because our community is all of these people, but it's also the ones that are actively compiling, but it's also the ones that are actively answering questions, but it's also the ones who are in the wild and don't actually talk to us, but, gener oh, but use our bits. And so figuring out how we can have a clear success criteria for what we're doing that we can measure and how we can best interact with these people, including tacitly the ones that don't interact back with us, that we can still be providing them good high quality documentation, good high quality bits, good high quality answers on our forums, pretty artwork that actually looks nice that I can never under any circumstances be allowed to make. Don't let me do that. It will be bad. And so I would encourage folks to spend some time, if you haven't looked at this recently, to go back through uh, this. Were there any things that people wanted to call out in here? Tomas. Just one thing I'm struggling struggling a bit with is um, we, we spoke about like we want to to go to conference where we can bring something like maybe not always pairing with Fedora and having like conference which are more relevant to CentOS. And as I'm not going to a lot of conferences in the past years, maybe we should start to review a list of where we want to have presence and to start to, to put a list of conference and to see if people have ideas maybe in the community as well. If people say, look, that would be nice to have a CentOS presence over there. Um, the, the thing is, uh, I, I wanted to try to contribute a bit to that, but I don't have like major ideas uh, out of the of the normal Red Hat Summit, uh, Flock, and all those things. So, if someone has idea around that, uh, please contribute. Uh, help us to to decide where we can go to have uh, a bit of uh, um, like where we could bring something uh, to the party, basically. I feel like that would be in the purview of the promo sig to some extent. Like I definitely agree there's value in maintaining a list of places that we should speak at and all of that, but it seems like this is something we should do as part of the promo sig. Yeah, yeah and I have I did uh I started up a um a GitLab space for the promo sig where uh you could do issue, you know, issues for for event planning. I haven't socialized it very much to to um get people doing it but like the idea of it is to open up the process and make it not just files on my computer um that only i see uh but i would absolutely appreciate um i agree with that that the, the planning and execution and all that stuff would should be all promo sig um but I, there's maybe some room for maybe asking just kind of the wider people who don't want to actively participate day to day in promo sig but still might have input on an event that would be really useful for us to be at um because things might not hit my radar that should so as on that front i tend to get a surprising bit of value out of the uh, lwn announcements list of conferences and then i go back and troll through the video archives and watch presentations later but there's usually a very good list of what's going on floating around in there Okay, so let's try to build on that and uh, come back with, with uh, more like trying to have a list of few things we want to do for next year. Yeah. That sounds great. And one more thing that I want to dedicate time is the blog ID about new things appearing in stream. So unfortunately, I looked recently and I didn't see anything like that I could talk about uh, in in the in what I'm working with at least, so I will keep watching and try to to do uh, a bit of oh that's new in stream it will come to rail uh, post uh, I try to to draft something uh, as soon as I have an ID and uh, 
trying to to kick off this uh, this thing as well because I think it's a really great idea uh, if we can if we can like uh, show feature in advance and talk about how it will help in the future. Definitely. Do you think we could have a way for um, maintainers of different components to surface somewhere? Hey, this is something that was pushed that's in stream now that went up in RL that we think is cool or that we think is important, visible, not, not just a package bump, but like stuff that we think is actually visible or that the maintainer thinks like is visible, I would like to socialize. Like I've noticed a few times folks have emailed the bell saying, hey, this thing is landing and that's really cool. But I wonder if we need something a bit more structured or like something that Sean can collate and put on the blog in the newsletter or something like that. Um, the answer that I would give you is yes, uh, but we don't know how yet. <laughs> so one of the things uh, that we've asked for quite some time is to, to do those kind of announcements on CentOS Devel. I know like Florian uh, does it for glibc and some other, yep. um, some other teams have done it as well. And we're going to continue to encourage that from an internal perspective. Um, Brian, I'm going to put our, our conversations on the spot here a little bit, but we've been trying to figure out like, how do we continue to get ahead of that both for what's coming in a minor release, but also what's coming um, down the road for rel 10. And one of the ideas is to do something along the lines of like the Fedora change process, but not exactly. Um, and so if we can figure out how to do that for rel 10, and ELN, I don't know that there's any reason we couldn't figure out a way to do that for minor releases as well. That would be I awesome. Mean, we, I can, yeah, it's, I can, it's something that we're working on, but not with what I would call like super urgent priority, so. I can give a like a little bit of, uh, of color on that because we did talk about this at the ELN SIG meeting was it two weeks ago already. Yeah. I, I don't even remember what day it is, but, uh, but yeah, we're looking at, um, at putting some of that stuff in discourse so that it looks familiar to people, but uh, we're working on some of the tags and, and stuff, at least for the major release process. And then for, for the minor release stuff, just, just like you said, we've been encouraging folks to, to highlight what they can, you know, kind of on their own time about uh, things as they come up in their day-to-day -day work. So we'll continue to do that for sure. Yeah. Well, one of the things too, on, on highlighting neat and cool stuff, um, I agree it would be nice to give people a heads up on what's coming in stream itself, but I almost feel like it would be even more advantageous for the project to highlight the cool stuff that's happening in the SIGs. And like, Davide, I know you guys post your quarterly report in for the Hyperscaler SIG. Um, I'm working on bootstrapping the ISIS SIG right now, uh, and we'll probably do a blog post or something somewhere when I can. Um, but if we can encourage them to to kind of promote themselves a little bit more as well, that that kind of lends itself towards like it's not just whatever Red Hat is doing in stream; it's what the the community is doing as well. I agree. I think in general, having like promotion around the SIG is is valuable, and it would be nice to have more public comms from all of the SIGs in a visible way. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and if. So this kind of ties back a little bit to the mailman versus discourse conversation. If we give them a way to do that in discourse that is easy to do and easy to tag and identify, uh, and it has a broader audience, maybe not a broader um, you know, interactive audience, but a broader reader audience, then that's another plus one for something like discourse. Yep. Yeah, for what is worse for the SIG reports, uh, I did find the, the process that Sean used for the last one much better than the previous ones. Where like we got a ticket uh, compared to like, you may or may not get an email like two days before it's due. Like get, getting a ticket and all of that definitely helped. Excellent. So uh, we've got three tickets on our uh, refresher reminder roadmap. So uh, board ticket uh, 89 is public integration testing for stream. And I think our last set of conversations on it were some discussion about uh, the roadmap for Zool, but that was tied up briefly in some GitLab transitions and all of those things. And so do we have a plan for how to get some more public integration testing or how to let people contribute their tests? 
uh, starting with T-functional is uh, is the thing. So that's another thing that the, I know the stream team has been working on that. Um, let me see if I can find a link here. Uh, let's see, this is recent. But this is for stuff in the distro. So they've gotten um, uh, T-functional running in a, a number of different places on the individual composes instead of just what we stage out to the mirror network. And I know they're going to continue on some of that stuff. And so continuing to con contribute tests to T-functional, that's going to be a, a really good place to start with in the beginning. The Zool infrastructure is it, it's still a thing that we'd like to do, but uh, it's you know it may take a little bit more long-term planning and uh, architecting in that space. But I know the team is really proud of uh, getting this this testing URL done because it's been something that folks have asked for for a while. And uh, they've recently been able to turn this around. Is work done on T-Functional going to be useful even if we switch to Zool in the future? Or it's uh, Yeah, so it's likely that we're going to... Well, um, well, I'll give you my opinion. Uh, uh, like, I think we should keep T-Functional around uh, just for general functional tests, because it's really helpful for, uh, you know, gating to the, the mirror network and other things like that. Um, we may end up breaking up pieces of T-functional and putting them into, uh, like package level integration tests. There's a lot of stuff in there that are package level integration tests that we just threw together into one central location. So I think it's, um, it's going to be useful. I think it should probably live on a, in some form what the execution environment like doesn't necessarily matter, but uh, but this is what we're uh, what we're looking at in the meantime, just while we sort of explore Zool some more. Yeah, this seems like a potential avenue of contribution for people into the project as well, because like I could see someone that, that their avenue of contributing to CentOS is that they use it, they find something they care about, and they contribute a test for it so that it stays functional to the level that they want. Do we have documentation to? make this doable for people. Quite frankly, the last time I looked at the functional, it wasn't the most understandable thing in the world. I, I will confess, T functional looked pretty cool on the outside, but I never actually took it apart. Yeah, we, I'm using it internally as well so if if some doc is missing maybe it's worth working on it if 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 you think it's not like how to contribute you mean uh, davide yeah i was thinking like if from the point of view of somebody that uses centos that figures out oh it would be cool to have a test for this specific feature in nginx say or in what, what like some core package that isn't currently covered well first is what is the current test coverage where are the tests Okay. How do I see where they are? And I think that that website that you link helps there. And then from there, how do I add a new test for doing something? Like I, I is, feel like that's, yeah, that's so the kind of thing that I'm looking for. We've got the README and this the, the GitHub that I linked here is the, uh, like so that's the central location for accepting contributions. Um, it links to a wiki page at the moment that we probably need to figure out where that's going to live at some point. But the, the wiki page has a, a an overview of, of kind of how the breakdown works and then, uh, you know, how folks have written tests in the past. Oh, OK. Um, I had not seen this wiki page. This is, this is useful. Thank you. Yeah, the, the readme refers to a docs. I haven't looked this much either. The readme refers to a docs director that doesn't seem to be there. I guess that's the when one in one. doubt. Yeah, that's some cruft cleanup for sure. And uh, the next ticket on the list is uh, CentOS Stream 9 in the Windows subsystem for Linux. Um, I believe that that's still locked on the broader implications there. Um, yeah, I don't have any updates on uh, that I can share at this time on that. Was this blocked on a legal thing or a technical thing or? WSL uh, was blocked on a legal thing. Yeah. Okay. So I, I continue to be interested in this, but I know that it's complicated. 
And uh, the last one that's on our list is uh, guidance for how to set up accounts on uh, Quieta.io for uh, SIGs and namespacing things. And I vaguely recall someone was looking at namespace stuff in there and it wasn't me. And that's all I remember. It is this, so forgive me, I did not read the ticket in advance. At least I didn't get this far. Is this for how the board thinks we should structure namespaces in Quay.io and providing documentation and guidance? Or is this? Yes. Uh, okay. Then um, I will, I can take an action item to go off and read the ticket and really understand it and maybe work with Sean and Brian on updating documentation and bring a recommendation for namespacing. Um, but I also know that that's probably going to have some hits on infrastructure. So we should do it in conjunction with them. I think yeah. we can probably bring it in with, uh, with some of the existing uh, discussions that we have going on about policy for the, uh, well, just to let you know, we're looking at, at how to enable some of the SIGs to push to the, the various cloud providers. So now that we have ac access to Azure and AWS and all of that stuff, we'll want some, some guidelines for how to, um, like make sure you're following the trademark policy and make sure that you mark it as a SIG artifact and all of, all of that stuff. I think this is all similar, uh, it's similar types of policy and maybe we can tackle it all together, including Quay and the, the rest of the cloud providers. That sounds good. Like I'm, my personal interest in this is making sure that the documentation gets updated because as Brian knows, like the things that we say on our wiki page and our, our SIG guide don't necessarily match reality right now. So I want to help clean that stuff up. Yes. Yeah. And I would add to that having consistency for the things that we produce so that we can have a tool that does the work that does it the same way everywhere would be wonderful. So do we need to make a decision whether we should use the SIG page or the wiki at this point so that we do do all the documentation in one place? Let's that, not that use is, the wiki, please. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think if you ask anybody who's who's done it recently, maybe they'll just say, you know, get rid of the wiki. But I do know that there is information on the wiki that is not on the SIG space, and we need to make sure we're going to migrate it over before we burn it all down. So okay. I have done a static dump of the wiki already. I am happy to rerun it at any time if we want to freeze it uh, and like transfer it to a static site or something. Uh, like the, the technical part of doing that process is sorted out. So if we made the decision that we want to sunset the wiki, it's relatively straightforward to do so. It kind of sounds like at least for the SIG, sorry, I'm walking through Vancouver. Um, it almost sounds like at least for the SIG part, we should get everything that's on the wiki and just make sure that we port it over to the SIG section. I don't think we've made decisions about any other section, but I think at least on the SIGs and the SIGs formation we have. Yeah. Do you mean the SIG, uh, the SIG guide itself or the individual SIG pages? Because there's quite some variety for individual SIGs and how they structure their docs. Yeah. And the initial, like, how to start a SIG is still on the wiki, not... Okay. Not that on one we need to move. That one we yeah. absolutely should move. Yeah. yeah. Let's move that and any of the SIGs who are ready. I know Cloud is now using the SIG section. If it's not, we can quickly get it there and at least start the process of getting everyone to move there. Yeah. Also, the last time I checked, the SIG uh, policy, or I forgot the name of the actual document, but it had a specific reference that one of the requirements for SIGs was to maintain a page on the wiki yeah. on a specific well, we can... address with like the list of members and these and that. So we, well, we should can... update that. Yeah, let's update that. And we can even add, if an older SIG, please migrate to a new location as part of your SIG responsibilities of being active. One thing to consider when, if we're gonna uh, take the wiki down and, and, and migrate the data somewhere else is to also include historical data. Um, there's, there's older versions of pages that may- Yeah, I, I think 
there is a plan to have a read-only version of the wiki somewhere. So okay. I think that will take care of that concern. Okay. But if, if Mike is concerned about old versions of pages that you can currently access by going through the history of a page, I, I, our static dump isn't getting us that, right? It's getting us the current version as of the dump of each page. I thought no, it was we can get the history too, although oh, it's we can. janky. All right. So if you want, uh, where the hell is it? Here. So this is what I had so far. Uh, this is from a dump of a few months ago, so it's not up to date. But this is what I had so far. And these are the sources, if you're curious. Um, uh, it the the crawler thing definitely crawls everything. Whether my mind still works and is able to reference the entire history of every page, I have my doubts, quite frankly. But it mostly works in that it doesn't look like there's any loss of content. There mm -hmm. might be a loss of accessibility of the content. Um, uh, one thing that one can turn on on these that I did on there is full text search, which might help for that. All right, if I get dropped, I'll join again. I'm getting in the elevator. Okay. 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 Uh, by the way, one page I found that still references the wiki is this one. Um, but there was also another one that specifically no. said that you had to maintain a page at and so that, that I can't find right now. Next up on our list is uh, community architect updates. Sean. Oh, hey. Um, everything for me right now is the, um, I've been busy with with trying to help get Flock off the ground and we're gonna do the CentOS Connect um, as an embedded track within Flock. So my, my big um, announcement, I don't know, ask really is uh, that the CFP is open both for Flock and, and for CentOS Connect. It's, it's the same system that you just select which track you want to be in, whether it's Fedora General or, or CentOS. Um, that CFP is open um, until June 20th. And I would, you know, appreciate submissions. So if you can, if you have submissions to put in, if you know people who are interested, you know, um, either Fedora or, or CentOS related or, or, you know, the merger of the two or anything kind of in the ecosystem. So um, please get that out there. And if you're able to attend, that would be, um, Pretty awesome because that's probably uh, we're we're not going to be able to do another event um, in person at least until probably Fosdem. I don't know what Fosdem plans look like at this point, but uh, and uh, honestly, I don't know what else we'd even be at in terms of um, booth staffing. So you said well, June twenty. June twentieth is when it, it was yeah. when the CFP closes. Um, I am looking at um, possibility of boost staffing at Linux Fest Northwest. Um, I I don't think I'm going to go, but I, I think um, I think we can have some people there and have a booth, probably a joint Fedora CentOS booth. I will be at Linux Fest Northwest, and I am happy to help uh, if needed. I will also be at Flock with a bunch of coworkers. Regarding the Flock CFP, I put in a talk, but it's. Uh, a talk that's applicable to both Fedora mm -hmm. and CentOS Connect, and it wasn't clear what I should actually choose. I believe I chose Fedora General, but um, when you and Justin are going through, can you make sure to search for talks that should be tagged in um, or yeah, we'll look favorably scheduled, yeah. just because there are definitely topics that I think are cross-community, and the CFP makes it look like you have to pick. Noted. It is ostensibly a different review committee, um, but I, I see everything and so does Justin, so. I rely on the power of the four eyes.
Hi, Amy. Oh. We have Amy on video. Right. Also a hotel. I'm now back at the hotel. Okay. I have uh, nothing else. So if you're okay. waiting on words to come out of my mouth, stop doing that. All right. So uh, last thing on our list is uh, any other business? Uh, I've discovered this morning that no. That's my reminder. Reminder for something. Yeah, yeah. I discovered this morning that uh, Alan Bartlett from the El Repo Project had passed away, and so that's uh, a friendly community to us and to uh, for a lot of us who have been here for a while. I've traded hundreds of emails with Alan, and he's been wonderful. And so, for those of you who did not see that, um, I leave this information in your hands. Yes, that's sad news, uh, and uh, I think uh, we we can put a, a little uh, thanks in in the board minutes. So uh, we'll draft something. I'm not sure where he is, but maybe we could send something, at least a card. Yeah, it's the uh, in the uh, thread on their list, uh, they posted some more information about. Uh, locality and those things. Um, it didn't have a country listed, so I think he was US based, but I don't actually know because he responded to my emails at like three in the morning sometimes. But I was also at three in the morning emailing him back, so who knows? Um, but it would be nice to send something. Yeah, Mike uh, dropped the uh, link to his page on the Santos Wiki. Which indicates he might be UK based. Yeah. And so I think that that is uh, all of our uh, public agenda.